Okay, now that we have designed a product, we want to 3D print it on the MakerBot printers. You do need access to MakerBot print. To get your SolidWorks file into MakerBot print, or actually any other slicing software, we want to save this file as an STL. So any other changes, I just saved my part file. And now I'm going to save it as an STL file as well. File, save as. And all we're going to do is change our file type to an STL. <clears throat> you can rename it if you want. Maybe you have different versions. Call it what you want. Mine already exists. I'm going to hit yes. But you'll see this line orientation here. Just hit yes. You have to for this to work in SOLIDWORKS. And that's it. We now have a file that we can bring in to MakerBot print. File. We're going to insert a file. And I'm going to browse for this file. Sticky notes. Current year. Here it is. This one happens to have a Cura symbol. Yours may have a MakerBot symbol. I have both versions. I don't know why it defaults to Cura. But this is the STL file. And first thing I want to do is I want to orient this on the build plate. I can rotate in 90 degree increments, which is typical. And one thing that we do want to do is center this. So go to Arrange and arrange the build plate. There are some key steps here that I want to do to, to set this up. One is I want to be able to control some settings. Um, the ones I'm going to go over today are recommendations. One to get you the fastest, most reliable print, which is probably what you're concerned about for this first design and the fact that you have a six-hour print time. Now that we have something on the build plate, first thing we need to do is choose a printer. We have two MakerBot printers available. Um, the Replicator Plus is the faster one. We also have the 5th Gen. If your time checks out on the Replicator Plus, we'll go with the... Uh, we can still print it on the 5th Gen. So I want to go and choose a printer to add. All of our printers are unconnected. We transfer our data uh, via USB drive. And I'm going to choose a Replicator Plus. Just click in the background, and you'll notice that the build volume may change. And now I want to control some settings. Your list here is not as extensive, and that's what we want to change. So I'm going to go to Custom Settings. There are some things that we want to control all the time. Most of them happen here in Quits, Quick Settings. It's an option for Hide or Show. Um, base Layers, this is something that we want to show. So if it says show, it's not in this list. So I'm going to hit show. Layer height is something that we want to control. Um, we could change this ahead of time. 0.3, enter, would be the highest layer height I'd say is acceptable. Infill density, most times we print at 10. I want to show that. Number of shells, we don't usually worry about this. I mean, we're holding, writing utensils in a pad of paper. Our shell thickness is not going to matter too much here. There are a lot of things that we just don't change. Um, the next one we're going to look at is, I'm just double checking, layer height we already have shown. Infill. We've already shown our infill density. We also want to be able to change our pattern. Um, diamond or linear would be our first go-to's. Um, we may find advantages to other ones at some time, but diamond or linear are going to work. Um, floors, we should not have any floor adjustments, supports and bridges. This is an odd one. We always want supports under bridges. I don't know why this is an option. And we want to be able to control our support outset. This is a newer option in some of these versions. We do want a zero offset. And we do have to hit enter when we key these in. Support density. We should be able to get away with 10%. And this is something that we want to be able to control. 
support model spacing we're not going to change, and support type, breakaway support, and this is something we want to be able to turn on. If we do not have support material turned on, our prints will typically fail. If it doesn't need support, it won't generate it. It is better to have this turned on than to not have this turned on. And then base layer, I think all we have here is the raft, <coughs> excuse me, the raft size is the only thing, or raft outset, which is something we want to control. And we're pretty lucky getting away with two millimeters instead of the default four. Again, the raft holds this to the build plate and we just break it off and throw it in the trash anyway. So I want to be able to control that change. So everything else we're going to leave the same and we're going to hit done. So now in this drop down menu for print settings, I don't have to go back through all those custom settings every time. They're going to be here on my screen and I can control them. We want to print with a raft. We're going to change from four millimeters to two. And again, when we want to make that change, we have to hit enter. If I just hit two and go to the next feature that I want to change or next uh, control, it didn't change. It stayed four. Diamond or linear, and this is one you can try it both ways. Sometimes linear is faster, sometimes diamond's faster. Again, a layer height of 0.3 millimeters is the highest I would go. We can go down to 0 0.08 think is the cutoff on the low end. We can go anywhere in between. 0.3 is the highest and the fastest. Um, support density, 10%. I don't need any offset generation here for the support, but breakaway support and support under bridges. This would be what I would recommend as your fastest settings to get a, I would say, a reliable printed product on these maker bots. The only other change I would make is by changing from a diamond infill to a linear infill. That would be the only changes I would make. Now we want to generate a preview. This will tell us print time. Again, for you, that is a design consideration that you have to have a six hour print time. It will tell us the mass, which is something we need to fill in on a 3D print slip that you will fill out as you save your file. So I'm getting a preview. I have realized that my print time is over six hours. I'm going to have to go make a design change. Uh, maybe we could play with some settings. But I do need that support material because of this gap underneath where it would just sag to the build plate. So I need to make some sort of change here. Um, this does not meet our design requirements. But this is what I know. I know the mass. If this were ready to go, and it is not, does not meet the design requirements. To transfer this to the printer, I'm going to hit export in the bottom right hand corner. I'm going to find one of the class USB drives and I'm going to save it onto that class USB drive as a MakerBot file. And that is how we transport or export these files to the 3D printer. So <coughs> saving our MakerBot product is an STL file, inserting it, arranging it on the build plate, setting up the settings that we want to be able to control, um, raft, raft offset, density, uh, infill pattern, layer height, support density, support offset, breakaway support, and support under bridges is always checked. Run a preview print time and mass, and then we'll export them. This is how we uh, take our product designs and 3D print them.